Okie dokie, it's time for some more spiderific action when we're going to investigate what are these spiders which are underneath my car which I'll be selling very soon. In part one, the great revelation was I thought I was dealing with redback spiders because of the web network that I saw, but what we found was a grey house spider, or I call them cement spiders because they look like little globules of cement. In finding this style of spider, it did stop the spider eradication that I had going on here, and I had to do some spider investigation, which is what this video is all about. Oh, let's not forget that warning. Warning, the warning on this video has been removed, and this video is highly educational. If it's not educational, the demonetization bot will come along and slap it down. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Okay, let's do it. Okay, the first spider we're going to investigate is the one residing at the rear jacking point of the car. The drop down lines are just like a redback spider. I've got rat problems as you can see as well. But anyway, I set one of the cameras up looking right up at the jacking point to see the spider setting up its web. I need to see the spider clearly to identify the spider. Now, from what I can see, and some of this video will be sped up a bit because the spider moves around fairly slowly, which is fairly boring. I do believe this is a grey house spider, and this is not a redback spider, and I say that because of the way it's presenting to camera. I have shot a redback spider with one of these cameras in its night vision mode, and they do present in a different colour because a redback spider is black, and it sort of presents as a darker grey, or very dark grey. Uh, this spider is presenting more like a white or cream coloured spider under this night vision that this camera's got. Another notable feature about this spider versus a redback spider is it has stripy legs and now that I can see where it's residing up in its little hidey hole, it sets up that area differently to a redback spider. A redback spider will build a funnel shape, a nest, and sometimes it will disguise a nest with leaves and things or anything that it can find, yet I don't see these spiders doing that style of work in the area where they're starting to set up home. So in summary, the lower web work that goes down to the ground looks just like a redback spider, but the upper web work, which often is very mangled and messy with redbacks, I'm not seeing that type of intricate web work or nest that I would see if this was a redback spider. So in seeing this spider is not a redback spider, the good news is I'm going to let it live. I want to promote these spiders because... From what I can see around my home, where these styles of spiders set up, the redback spiders haven't got a chance. Okay, so we're now going to take a look at the spiderific action that was occurring at the rear of my vehicle. This one is a little bit more complicated and is a little bit more difficult to get the footage that I needed to see to understand exactly what was going on. What I'm relying on in capturing the footage is spiders tend to be creatures of habits. Once they pick up a spot where they like to reside, they tend to repeat their web action over and over and over, and that's what helped me understand where this spider lives. There's a curious piece of footage that I captured only by chance because the spider's movements don't trigger the cameras to record. I've got to manually record these. There was a little bug, a winged thing that looked like a mosquito on the back differential of the car. I'll try and put a red mark or something so you can see it. Keep your eye on that thing and it triggered the spider into action and hopefully I'll show you the spider moving in real time and you can see how fast the spiders move when it senses there's something in its web. In seeing this, it did remind me of the very similar way these spiders move on their web, like redback spiders do when there's something to be caught. There are quite a few things which are similar between redbacks and these spiders, but there's also a number of things which are totally different. So I got the footage of the spider setting up its drop down lines. They're quite curious to see. It does take a period of time for the spider to do this, and I would have accelerated some of the video here. But from what I can see, we're not dealing with a redback spider. This spider at the back of the car is also one of those grey house spiders, cement spiders, whatever spider. And it wasn't until I got a camera and poked it up underneath the back of the car, looking up into areas which are very hard to see, I started to see things I wanted to see plus more. I saw the spider that resides at the jacking point of the car went to visit its neighbour spider, and I think, well, I don't think it was welcome and it sort of hung around for a little while and then it went back to its original spot. And maybe the real bonus in all this is, apart from seeing the spider, I can also see there's an egg sac there. The spider egg sac looks like it's opened up. There are little speckledy things. That would be baby spiders of this style of spider, which is nice to see. And I can also see that mother spider is feeding on something as well. So it's quite a busy area. 
And in seeing this gives me an idea of what to do with all those wonderful spiderlings. So because I know exactly where these spiders are via those little security cameras, I went to take a look at those areas during the daytime with lights and you start to see just how reclusive these spiders are. The jacking point spider literally turns into nothing and goes right up inside the jacking point. The spider, which is at the back of the car, well, it's almost the same color as the metal that it's against. It literally disappears, but you can see in a much clearer way what's going on there. And I've got a very, very good purpose for all those wonderful, wonderful spiderlings. They're going to help me get rid of the redback spiders in the backyard. So my little plan, it's a simple one, it uses some simple tools, I've got a little plastic tub with a cutout in it for a handle of the good old spider brush which has been in our family for donkey's years. You basically get the spider brush, brush it up against where the egg sac is, hopefully the spiderlings and whatever else will attach to the brush, they will not drop down on my face, and then I get that brush into the little tub and then I can put the lid on and then I can take that tub to where it's needed out of the backyard where one of the redback spider infestations keeps setting up. And hopefully me babbling on there, you've seen it happen. I didn't speak live to camera when I did this because I was a little bit preoccupied in doing it right. So the final bit of course is very simple. I basically open up that little tub, I get the spiders off the brush and let nature take its course. That's the way this is going to work I hope. And from what I could see, it took no time for those little spiderlings to start setting up a new home. And sure, many of these spiderlings will become victims of their new environment, but I only need a couple of them to survive. And I'm pretty sure that will knock back the redbacks that love to live around these tubs. It was interesting to do. Fluffy was very curious as well, which was nice to see. But from this point on in this area, I can't come in and do my normal firebombing to pull back the redback numbers because I want to try and promote these grey house spiders to live here and the theory is these spiders will stop the redbacks from setting up. Anyway, if I babble on there long enough I can just keep adding more shots of redbacks being firebombed. That's all we want to see, isn't it? I think what I'm doing here is going to work. This is a scientific experiment. I hope the YouTube demonetization bot heard the word scientific, okay? It's a peculiar spider to have turned up at our place because it's a recent spider in a sense. I have not seen these spiders before. Apparently they're from Queensland. I don't know what they're doing far away from home. But all I can say is that every time I've seen these grey house spiders, cement spiders, grey widows, whatever you want to call them, the redbacks haven't got a chance. I've never really seen these spiders living side by side. But it does seem, and there have been a few people who commented on this, that because I've basically reduced the redback numbers, it's allowed another spider species to come in and basically claim where the redbacks used to be. I can tell you this, I'm quite happy to have those grey house spiders around. They're fine by me, but as for the redbacks, I'm always going to be out to get them. We'll finish off with something nice and positive and lovely to look at. My pet redback spider, who is called Bindi. Bindi is very special for many reasons. Bindi is the sole surviving redback spider from this spider tank 2.0. At the time of shooting this video, it's basically week 28 of the evolution of the spider tank, but that's not Bindi's age because I don't exactly know when she was a spiderling. As I'm editing the video, it got up to week 30, and there's something peculiar about Bindi, and what's happening is she's eating a lot of things, she's getting bigger and bigger, but she's not developing an egg sac. Now, I'm not going to sound like an expert and say to you, I know what's going on here because, well, I've got a theory. I don't really want to discuss the theory because it would probably flag this video. But maybe someone in the audience can explain to me what's going on there. I think basically Bindi is, well, trapped by her own circumstance. And hopefully that's giving part of my theory away there. She's been, well, solitary. There's another clue. And also we're winding down to the end of the spider season and I'll be honest here with the redback spiders that I walk past every day I'm not seeing them developing egg sacs at this time of year. All I seem to be seeing now is well developed egg sacs which are opening up and there's little baby redback spiders everywhere. But at my house things are changing the redback spiders are getting the squeeze from the wonderful grey house spider which seems to be performing miracles at controlling the redback spiders for me. Let's just hope that this trend continues.